Hello once again, beautiful people. Welcome to a very special episode of the Weekly Wing-In. This week, we're going to go deeper inside the Jared Fogel scandal. As some of you know, if you've been following my blogs and my podcasts and my videos here on YouTube, you know I have been talking about the rise and fall of Subway's golden boy, Jared Fogel. When Jared was first busted, we didn't want to believe it. I mean, seriously, it was Jared, right? Well, in our eyes, Jared was a nice guy. He couldn't do anything wrong. And after all, he was a face of Subway, and it was a face that we could all trust. Another thing that boggled my mind was how much good Jared did for those kids with his Jared Foundation charity work. And I really wanted to believe that he just made a poor decision by surrounding himself with the wrong people, but he's no longer guilty by association. He's now guilty of having a sickness. And that sickness not only ruined his life, it ruined the lives of the people around him. In a federal court appearance Wednesday in Indianapolis, Jared Fogel sat with his head down and hands clasped. He nodded affirmatively and spoke softly in response to questions from U.S. Judge Magistrate Judge Mark Dinsmore asking whether he understood the charges and proceedings. He is expected to plead guilty at a later date on one count each of traveling to engage in illicit sexual conduct with a minor and distribution and receipt of child pornography. He has waived his right to appeal. For now, he is being placed on home detention with GPS monitoring and is not in jail. The date of his next court appearance has not been set. And the government, which said its investigation is ongoing, reserves the right to present additional evidence when Jared Fogel is sentenced. Prosecutors agreed to seek a sentence no greater than 12 and a half years, but the judge ultimately will decide how much time Jared Fogel will spend in federal prison. Jared Fogel agreed not to seek a sentence of less than five years, and he will have to register as a sex offender when he leaves prison. But it's not only that. Jared had 14 victims, 14 victims, and now he's going to have to pay them $100,000 each for the damage that he has done. These kids are going to be in counseling and in treatment for years because they trusted him, because he was such a great guy because he put on a facade that he could be trusted and that he could do no wrong. This is the classic profile of a sociopath. Jared Fogel repeatedly asked one of the minor victims and other adults who were escort service employees to provide him with access to minors as young as 14 years for sex. To make sure the escorts weren't cops, he had sex with them and offered a finder's fee if they could provide him with underage prostitutes. The younger the girl, the better, he told one of the victims. Jared Fogel said he would really make it worth her while if she could find one. Jared Fogel started his solicitation of adult prostitutes in 2007, the charging documents say and he would arrange these activities during his business trips both across the USA and in foreign countries. 2007 was the same year Jared Fogel hired Russell C. Taylor of Indianapolis as executive director of the Jared Foundation. 
The two have met through Taylor's previous work as the Youth Market Director for the American Heart Association of Indiana. So as the evidence mounted up, Jared lost his contract with Subway, he lost his Jared Foundation, and he also lost his wife and kids because of his sickness. But this is where the plot thickens, boys and girls, so I hope you're grabbing your popcorn for this one. Between 2008 and 2013, the Jared Foundation raised $650,000, according to CNN, though it seems to have spent less than a quarter of that amount on its mission. Just $145,647 was donated to fight childhood obesity in that period, tax documents revealed. Where did the rest go? The Jared Foundation paid even more than the donation amount to its director, Russ Taylor, who happens to be listed as a co-conspirator in Fogel's indictment, and was also arrested on child porn charges earlier this year. Taylor received 40000 a year for a total of $180,000 through 2013. The foundation also spent 20000 on a golf tournament and another 12000 on meals and entertainment in 2008 alone. So, my question is, can Jared Fogel be reformed? And what the fuck was he thinking when he was wrecking the lives of those 14 innocent young children? For years, Mr. Fogel has worn a mask that has been pleasing to the public eye. And he had a lot of us fooled. So if we have learned anything from this, we have learned that the devil comes in many non-threatening forms. And one of those forms is Jared Fogel himself. So, question of the day. How long of a jail sentence do you think Jared should serve? Leave your comments in the comments section below and sound off on this subject because I want to hear your thoughts on this. Hey, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at middleagefatass at gmail.com. Also, if you want to keep up with my latest updates, you can also check out my brand new website at middleagefatasspdx.weebly.com. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and tell your friends. Well, that's it for another edition of the Weekly Weigh-In, and I will see you beautiful people tomorrow for Food Porn Friday.